All right. So very good afternoon once again to everyone. Thank you once again for coming to this session, the fundamentals of organizing and writing academic uh, research paper. Uh, you're all aware by now what is the aim of this session, so I'm not going to go through this anymore. Uh, we are at our lesson five today. We've started off on 11 February on choosing a topic, preparing to write, abstract, introduction, and now we have gone to the heart of the whole writing process, which is actually the literature review. So today we have a lot to cover, uh, but don't get confused with too many things that we are speaking today. You've got access to this slide. We will try to just go through quickly on every slide here, but uh, you have access to these slides for you to get more information. And if you think that there's certain things that you are unclear, you can always uh, reach us. So three of us uh, will be facilitating the session uh, as always. Uh, the first part, uh, Prof. Brian will handle, then followed by me, and then uh, Faru Riza will handle uh, a bit more uh, today uh, because there's a lot of aspect of uh, library help that you need when you do literature review. So if you see today's session, uh, we are going to cover quite a bit, so uh, so don't worry that it is uh, going to be too much of information in this within this one hour. Uh, but all these guides will be given to you uh, for you to structure your own literature review. So without further ado, I am going to invite uh, Prof. Brian to to run through the, the first aspect of the presentation today in trying to understand and defining what literature, literature review is all about, the purpose, the features, and also the, the structure of the literature review. Over to you, Dr. Prof. Brian. Thanks, uh, Prof. Vic. Um, first of all, I, I just want to say that writing can be an enjoyable process, all right? But there will be times when it's quite dry, all right? And you, you have to push through that. Um, I mean, the I mean, I've just spent, as long as Prof. Vic, it's been a whole, um, last couple of weeks writing board papers <laughs> okay i guess we're now in a state of relief um and uh and and uh you know there's a burden lifted i think when you when you get past writing a piece of work whether it's a lit literature review or a, a, a business related um, endeavor but it can be an enjoyable process and i think as you understand more about what's required in, in a literature review and you gain confidence that enjoyment will grow. Okay, so so don't don't be too concerned, right? So so the, the two main purposes of, of writing a literature review uh, are the first is that to, is to provide an overview of the the the, the sources that you've explored um, in terms of creation um, of um, your research or identifying your research gap, gaps, and secondly to demonstrate. Uh, to the readers where your research fits in the wider scope of that field of study, all right? And, that, and it would involve you looking at a whole range of sources, scholarly sources, okay? And, um, and, and bringing that to the fore, okay? There, there is sometimes, um, but uh, to a much more limited extent, opportunity to sometimes bring in popular literature, but it's, that's, that should be downplayed. Generally, it's, it's peer-reviewed, Scholarly articles and books is what you would normally look for if you're publishing an academic journal or publishing in a research dissertation or thesis. You know, thesis. All right, so, um, so, so the purpose of a literature review, all right, um, is uh, I think this is a great diagram. Um, if you look at the, the, the top there, is to, uh, is to find out what information already exists in your field of research, all right? So it's, it's providing to the reader an overview of all scholarly activity um, that you can reasonably access related to uh, your research problem or research gaps, all right? And, and then, uh, and secondly, I'm going to really highlight that, it, that you need to then identify the main ideas, right? So, that, so there are many, there can be an infinite almost um, quantum of ideas out there, which may be um, theories and, and uh, models may be related uh, to your research study, you need to identify the main ones and the seminal authors, right? So seminal is a word we're saying the main authors in a field of study, right? And so uh, uh, typically, if you don't identify those, uh, the seminal authors, when it goes for 
peer review for a conference, goes to a journal for peer review, um, or indeed if it's a thesis going for, um, uh, for examination, you don't have the key seminal authors mentioned, that can lead to rejection or failure uh, on, on your piece of research. And, and then uh, um, the next thing I want to do is just highlight that you, that you need to also, uh, if you take a look at uh, positioning in your research, uh, so in your literature review, where your particular research sit, uh, sits, so what context. And then as your literature unfolds, okay, uh, and, and amongst the existing established ideas, conclusions, models, you need to identify your research gap. So at least in lead somewhere, ultimately, just, uh, just, just saying, okay, this is what is known. This is not, not, this part is not known. And you can either propose a model, you go and test later, or you can actually simply leave it more open to some research question or research gaps, um, depending on the nature of your research to follow. Next slide. All right, so, so um, if you take a look here, it, um, in terms of the features of a good literature review, uh, it should uh, feature a, a summary of key sources organized in a, in a structured manner so the, the reader can, you know, enjoy the story unfolding, okay, of, of what is known and what is not known. All right, so, so, so and it, sh but it should not be just a, this author says that, uh, uh, author B says this, okay, author C says that, no, no, no. There will be authors who actually uh, ha have a similar, but not identical um, uh, perspective on, the, on a subject matter. And there may be another camp of authors who have, an, have another, or, or maybe building. So you'll see themes, you'll see clusters emerging. And uh, I think Prof Vic has said numerous times, and it's exactly the same advice that I give to um, uh, PhD and master students that I supervise. That I tell them to go out, read, read, read. Don't come back and see me for a number of months until you have the, the overview of the literature and you'll begin to see themes emerge, all right? Uh, so you start reading one article and then you look at the bibli bibliography and you, it leads you to another article and then you opens up a whole new stream of research that perhaps you weren't expecting. So your literature review, you are charged with telling a story, but also not making it, uh, I guess, a transcript of, a, of one author after A, B, C, D, E, right? You need to identify what, where are the clusters of ideas that are emerging, right? Um, and so, uh, so you will see, there will be, um, just at the bottom of the slide here, there will be a progression um, through your literature review um, from, from the point here, of giving a new interpretation of old material through to tracing the intellectual progression of the field. Uh, and then you need to be evaluating, okay? Even in, the, in your literature review, you may choose to dismiss certain uh, previously published views. Maybe the methodology wasn't up to scratch. Maybe there was uh, there's some ethical issues in regards to the data collection process. Maybe there's been this misinterpretation, right? You, so you can evaluate the sources, but you also evaluate the views expressed. And then uh, that will lead ultimately to identifying a research gap, which may be expressed uh, some cases as a research model, right? So on the right here, uh, you, you actually have this um, uh, a caution, really. I, I think it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great little box because it actually summarizes that not because, because, just because something is published doesn't necessarily mean it's credible. Okay, so just because something is published doesn't mean it's credible or indeed valid for your research. So you need to uh, arrive, I think it's more of an art than a science, to arrive at an ability to actually assess the literature you've come across, all right? And, and over time, you will develop that in your specific field. Your supervisor or your, or more if you're an academic, you're going to publish a paper, a more senior academic in your field of study, 
will be um, perhaps more accomplished um, in terms of identifying you know, well-known journals. Um, also, uh, if you refer to uh, the librarians, they, they can also guide you which are the more credible um, databases you should be searching. Um, and, there, and, and there's also, if you're ever in doubt, there's also indexes on pre, what are called predatory journals, right? So those journals which you should steer clear of um, as you look for sources to con construct your literature review. Uh, next slide. All right, All right. so, so there, there are different types of literature reviews. Um, there's, there's, there's something called a primary study. Um, uh, so, sorry, there's, there's, there's different, sorry, let me repeat that. It is important to think that the knowledge in a given field is consisting of three different layers. There's three different layers in the literature, okay? There is firstly the primary studies. Secondly, there is those studies who um, really tease out uh, those primary studies and, um, and, and come to new interpretations and build upon those early primary studies. And then there are later interpretations, okay? And uh, if you've ever had the opportunity to go to a research uh, conference, often re uh, conference papers are of this nature, but there are also journal articles like this as well. Um, we're actually beginning to, to really uh, examine what's been found from multiple perspectives and have a dialogue, a discussion, uh, formal or informal, um, around uh, uh, the earlier stages of um, literature development. There are many uh, different types. This is not a finite set of different types of literature review. I think that probably the most common one is something called a systematic review, a systematic review. And a systematic review is, is, a, is a formal literature review, which consists of an overview of all the existing literature uh, within a field of study. It's pertinent to the particular topic you're trying to address, um, leading to support and ident or identification support of a research question. Next slide. All right, so, so it's, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's important that you always think of the reader when you're writing, right? It is, you are not trying to just, I've had this said to me, vomit ideas on paper. It has to be structured in a certain way. Now, I'm a little bit of a wordsmith. I will rework and work and re re a, a, a sentence and a, and a, uh, a paragraph um, until I get it right. But w whether it be in a, uh, a paragraph, in a section, um, uh, you should always start with big ideas and then go smaller. So the funnel approach. And, um, and so, so the diagram on the, on the right here is, is, is uh, useful to, to you, okay? But quite simply, start with the big ideas and then begin to work more closely towards your, your main idea. It's very tempting to go off on tangents. All right, that, but that will just confuse the reader. All right, you need to be open to different ideas. Yes, you do. Okay, you should be a thinker, a researcher. You shouldn't be um, in, in a silo, but you need to also, um, when you put pen to paper, after you've done all that thinking and looked at all of the literature, you need to actually um, have, have, a, have a clear, concise way where you're going big down to small. So, yeah, don't start your literature review too early is my advice, right? Read broadly first, make lots of notes, okay? And then begin to cluster your, uh, if you're a visual person like me, I like to have my, my mind maps and draw things and um, I end up talking a lot to myself and, and, then, and then eventually I arrive at something which is more structured, all right? So, so, um, so some things to consider, when you're looking at this building, what I said in the previous slide, when you're looking at the credibility of um, a piece of research, okay? So uh, looking at the literature that you might want to include. You need to look at the origin of the researcher, okay? What are they, their particular credentials, okay? Which university are they working at? 
well, what's their background. You can also um, perhaps look at the funding uh, of their research. And uh, for example, I know that many years ago there was, um, we took decades ago now, they're in the 50s and 60s, there was research supporting the health benefits of smoking cigarettes, which we now know, okay, um, to not be a, a really a, a good thing to do. And yet, uh, you know, the, uh, the cigarette companies were funding research, right? So you need to look at who's doing the research, who are they funded by, how credible, therefore, uh, would you think their, their research is? You need to look at the objectivity um, of the authors. Are they being even-handed? Uh, okay, so you look at their literature reviews. Are they biased? Have they, have they, have they ignored a whole, whole cluster or area of, of research? Okay, which you would have discovered because you would have done read, read widely. Okay, and then you need to look at the persuasiveness of, of, of their um, of their findings. So, um, so, so how how convinced are you? This, this is a judgment call, ultimately, and the, and your judgment will be honed or improved through practice. And then ultimately, what contribution or what value, what contribution do they make? to expanding the body of knowledge. So is it worth for you to include them? Or to what extent do you need to include them in your, into your literature review? All right, so I, I, um, have fun. I think that's the one thing I wanna leave you with uh, to complete this section. It is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work needs to go into a literature review. For many of us, it makes up most of our time in a, in a piece of study, all right? Um, and but it, it can be also be an enjoyable process if you have a structured approach to it. So back to you, Prof. Thief. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Brian, uh, for starting us off with this topic. Um, so for my part of the discussion today, I'm going to take you through uh, on the development of the literature review, step by step. How do you actually come out with a good literature review? And I give you, I will also give you some examples. For you to look at and learn from uh, which can be handy for those of you who are really working on your, your research so if you look at the development of literature review there are four stages that we normally apply the first part is called what we call the problem formulation which topic or field is being uh, examined and what are its component issues so this is key because uh, you want to tie this with your uh, research question. So remember all research papers that you are writing must have a research question. So your problem formulation will be based on that. And then you start doing your search, literature search, finding materials that is relevant to the subject that is being explored. So that's your second aspect uh, of the process. And then you do some evaluation, determining which uh, literature can make uh, a significant contribution to the understanding of the topic, which literature is actually addressing some of the, the gaps that you want to investigate on. And then you look at the analysis and the interpretation, discussing the actual findings that is coming out or, or the conclusion that is coming out based on the literature. So you have not even done the actual research, but it's just looking at the literature that you have read. So you need to also consider uh, the following issues when you start writing your literature review. Clarify roughly um, how many sources uh, are you going to include? What is your parameters in terms of, okay, I'm going to review the literature from this year to this year, and I'm going to use all the following database. So there is a methodology on even how you're going to start your literature. It's not just, you just dive in and start looking for, for, for your sources. You need to decide, okay, I'm going to review all the high impact journal from this year to this year that have published the following themes that you're looking for. So you need to define it correctly to ensure that you have a, a systematic approach of actually finding the literature that you want. Uh, find models, use uh, the exercise of uh, reviewing the literature to examine how authors in your discipline uh, or in your area of interest have composed their literature review. So you can only do this if you read a lot. As I've said, you have to read a lot. The more you read, the more you'll understand the different journals that is available and how they have actually published this article accordingly and how the, how the uh, literature have been searched. So if you do not read enough and you start writing, you will have a problem because you do not understand 
what is out there uh, in the literature. So narrow or broaden the topic. So remember, we talked about this when we when we discussed on the top on the on the first subject in the first lesson on on topic uh, in designing topic. So when you do your literature, it's the same approach. You want to ensure that you have sufficient information. At the same time, it cannot be too broad or it cannot be too narrow. You always start at the broad level and then you bring down in a funnel approach that you see in the diagram here. So you will look at the broader topic as what Brian had mentioned as well. And then you start drilling down too much micro before you get into the research question itself. So, so this is important for you when you first start doing your literature review. Consider whether the sources are current. So this is important, especially if you talk about research related to technology. Okay, any technology related research have to be current. It's pointless to quote something that is obsolete when you talk about technology. Okay. So it's not just technology, there are a lot of other areas, other fields, you have to also be uh, cognizant of what is out there. Uh, is the discipline require the most latest information? Are you, let's say if you talk about a particular model, all you know, this model have been proven failure and you're trying to use the same model. So you have to know whether these sources are current and, and can still be used for your study. So there are systematic approaches uh, to literature review. So whatever literature you do, remember uh, the sources that you're finding is baseline against the research question that you want to uh, answer, look for an answer. Okay, so set the research question and then identify where you want to do the search. Okay, you can have some keywords that you can set so that you can use that as your baseline when you look use the databases to find the, the relevant information. You can use uh, Boolean logic, okay? Whenever you're in a, in a database system, Boolean logic is you're using the certain characters to actually find or, 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 or focus your, your search on. So normally in library search, you can use the and or not to actually find certain information. And then you run the search accordingly. And then you run through so this iterative process until you have sufficient information for you to do your analysis of the literature okay whether it's qualitative whether it's quantitative piece and then come up with the themes that is required for your research okay so so this process of literature is, is important it looks like doing uh, uh for those of you who have done a lot of qualitative based research doing a literature review is similar to doing a qualitative research okay so almost the same approach that you actually use. So when you do, uh, when you start doing your literature review, you need to get yourself organized. Don't just download every article in the world or, or save it or put it in a file, start highlighting, and then you have large files of literature and then you don't know what to do. So it has to be done in a very organized manner. You need to have a good way of managing this uh, literature that you have collected. So you can collect the literature and arrange the uh, literature based on chronological events okay year by year so that you know you can see the progression of the the knowledge that you're trying to address the by publication maybe you want to go uh, high impact journals uh, in your field that you are aware of that you go through publication by publication year by year and then you find the information it can be based on certain themes that you have set okay what are the the categories of the theme or conceptual categories that you have set to actually locate the information. It can also be based on certain methodological approach. I want to look at case study approach. I want to look at experimental approach. So what kind of methodological that you're keen? It can also be based on that, or it can also be on other areas of standard that you want to use. But what is important is when you do a literature review, you have this table, that if you look at the screen here. So I normally give my, my students, uh, a lot of my masters and PhD students, I always give them this table. I tell, okay, you do your literature review and then fill this table as you do. As you read one literature, fill this up. What was the study title? What is the main theory? What was the method used? So it's a table of summary of the literature. So this table is useful at the later stage because now at one glance, you know all the articles. You, you may have read 500 articles. And if you just file it up, you will, look, you will lose track of what is in the article. But when you have a table like this, you can filter this table later to say, okay, I want to pull out all 
the uh, article that use a certain method. Then it pulls out. I want an article that use certain theories. Then it, you can filter it. You can do this in Excel. Then you can filter the information that you want. And then based on the selected article, then you can investigate more in depth. So this is a very organized way of doing your literature review. So if you look at this diagram here, so this is, a, this is another example of what I have just said. So whenever you are doing a literature, you must always summarize the literature that you have read, not just highlight. That's what most of us tend to do, just highlight it or underline it. Um, if it is in, in, a, in a physical paper or if it is in online, then you tend to use a marker and then mark it uh, online. But the best way to do it is actually transfer the information into this format. You have a category, and you put okay, what is the quotes that's coming from there and where is the source? You just put this. So you group it according to how you want. As you read an article, you say, hey, this fits into the first point. The second point, you arrange it. So this is a, a good way of doing a literature review. The good part about this is by doing this, you will avoid plagiarizing. If you just highlight from a particular paragraph and then you start typing in, the probability is you may just plagiarize the whole thing. And when you run in to turn it in, it's going to catch you to say that this is plagiarized. But when you do it in this way, what you're doing is, okay, this is the code. Okay, now I can paraphrase it according to what it is stated. So th this method is much, much safer than trying to copy and paste from an article and then trying to rephrase it and you get caught. So by doing this, what will happen is when you read the literature review, you would realize that you have actually analyzed a particular discussion based on different articles. It is not article by article, but a combination of many articles that is talking about one part of the, uh, the head, head, uh, heading that you have here. So, so this approach will allow the reader to understand the topic much better coming from different perspective rather than uh, discussing based on article. If you have seen some of the uh, weak papers, uh, if you read through some of the article, you realize that hey, you have the same sources coming every other page or every other line, then you know that this is done in a, in a bad, the literature is not done properly. That's one way of, for me to identify when, if a particular literature is done correctly or not. If it's done correctly, within that one, two paragraph, you will have many sources coming. But if you only have one sources keep appearing everywhere. So what that shows is that particular researcher have actually read one article and then make a summary from that article. Then you take another article, make a summary. So that is a bad way of doing a literature. The best way of doing literature is you put it all together like this. So if you see the first topic here, if you see, let's say this example here, this example is talking about one class, uh, world-class university literature. So this one study that I did some time back, what do you mean by world-class university? So, so the first category that I'm looking for is what is the definition of world-class university? So I said, okay, world-class university based on the literature, okay, no agreed definition. Who said there's no agreed definition? So there's three articles said that. Uh, is an absolute term or relative term. So it's relative. So few person have said that. Uh, so what it is doing is it is allowing you to evaluate many articles that is talking about the same thing. So that allows you to write your literature more uh, effectively. So writing your literature review. Uh, so once you have settled on how to organize your literature review, you are ready to write uh, each section. So when writing your review, Keep in mind of uh, these issues. Remember, you must use evidence. This is an academic research paper. A literature review uh, is just like any other academic research paper. So your interpretation of the sources must be backed with evidence. That is valid evidence, okay? Not a Wikipedia or, or just on a Google search and, and someone have said without any uh, credibility. So you have to be very careful. Be selective. Select only the, the most important points in each of the sources highlighted. Okay, don't just take the whole thing. Then that becomes another problem of plagiarism. So be selective what you want to, to use and synthesize the information. Use the code sparingly. Don't overcode. If you overcode chunks of overcode, yes, you put a double bracket and you say, okay, this is exactly what they have said. But if you overdo it at the end of the day, where is your work? You just quoted someone else's work, but there seem to be no ideas coming from you. So this is so important, how you summarize and how you synthesize the information correctly. So when you synthesize it, you make an understanding of what they're saying, and then you synthesize it on your own. 
keep your own voice. So remember, while the literature review uh, present uh, uh, other ideas, your voice as the writer should remain front and centered. So be careful how you write. It's not just what someone else said, what it means to you in the context of your research. Your research. So be cautious when paraphrasing. Okay, so sometimes you tend to over, -para over paraphrase until the meaning is lost or the meaning is skewed towards what you want. So that is also important to be very careful when you do paraphrasing to ensure that the meaning of the, the, the original author's work is not uh, uh, changed based on what you want to show. So this is also important. Common mistakes uh, to avoid. So these are some most uh, common mistakes made in reviewing uh, a lot of this uh, uh, literature. Firstly, sources uh, in your literature review do not clearly relate to the research problem. So, so don't just pick any literature and start talking about it just because, oh, the topic looks the same, but actually it, when you read through it thoroughly, then you realize that hey, this particular article uh, does not deal with the research question that you are addressing. So the context is very different. So you have to be very careful the sources that you use. Secondly, is uh, you do not uh, you do not take a suf sufficient time to define and identify the, the relevant sources to use in the literature review. So because you're in a hurry to complete, so be careful what kind of sources they are using. You rely exclusively on secondary uh, analytical sources rather than uh, including relevant primary research studies or data. So it's not just based on secondary research, but also you need to support your studies based on certain primary data that you are also collecting. So that is why always at the end of the study, once you've completed the study, you tend to tie back, okay, this is my finding, my primary finding, how does it tie with the existing literature? You always tie it back, my finding is, uh, in compliance with the literature or seem to be contradicting to the literature. So in a research, you can contradict. It's not a problem at all. Um, uncritically accepts another researcher's findings, okay? And uh, interpretation as valid. So be careful. So you are examining it, examining uh, a literature critically. So you can say that whatever published there can be wrong. Doesn't mean that it's right. So you can actually uh, have your own voice to criticize a certain findings. So that is part of an academic uh, of debate. Okay, you can see how the knowledge uh, gets uh, changed along the way. Uh, does not describe the search procedure that were used in the literature review. So this is so important. So uh, because sometimes you will see an article that will say that uh, there's lack of research in the following area. From the, from the literature, it shows that there is a gap of knowledge here because there's not much publication or research done on this field. Are you sure? Because maybe you have not evaluated thoroughly the database. Maybe the database that you used was not correct. So that is why the, the search procedure is as important. You have to put the limit, okay, to say, okay, this, remember in the last uh, uh, lesson, we talked about delimitation. So this is one of the delimitation. You set a boundary. I'm only looking for research from this year to this year. And this is the analysis method is this way. This is how I found the article. So you've got to be very careful how you say that. Reports, isolated statistical result rather than synthesizing them, okay, correctly. So this is another problem as well. So if you pick a certain data from past research, uh, disconnected from the whole article, then the finding is useless. So you need to be able to synthesize what does that data means in that article versus your article. Whether that data, is it the same for you to use in your article? You've got to be very careful. Don't get disconnected from the, the actual research. So it must be well synthesized for the whole uh, article. Only include research that validates assumption and uh, does not consider any contrary finding. Basically, anything that supports your research, you're using it. Anything that's disagree, you don't want to use it. You just hide the research. So that is the wrong way of doing research. So you've got to be very careful. Whatever research that you choose, whether it's, it's against your own work or following your own work, you still have to report it uh, accordingly. So there are many ways of, of, uh, of writing uh, literature. So don't just review, the con uh, review for the content, but also look at 
how, how is the content being presented? Sometimes the content is almost similar to what you're doing, but you need to ask yourself a lot of these questions that you see on the screen. How are they? How is the ideas being organized? What methods have been used to study? The theories that is being, the sources, and then what kind of elements that is being used uh, in that particular article which, which is useful for your own study? And then, and then look at how, what are the, uh, how is this information being used at, at, at the different areas? So whether it ties very well to your own work. So these are all important things that you need to think about. So if you look at uh, one example, if you have a chance uh, uh, to find this article, okay, so this is a very good uh, article that I've used. Uh, I've given this to law, all my uh, masters and PhD students, so whenever they come in, I say, okay, read this first. This is the first step in doing your literature. So this is an exa good example of an article that has done, uh, the article is based on literature review, meaning to say the first aspect of the study is you review the literature. So what do you do after you have completed six months of literature review? You write a paper on the literature. So that is the first. So when you do a review paper, what basically you're doing is you're writing a literature, a paper based on literature review. So this is an example, destination image towards a conceptual framework. So at the end of the study, based on the literature review, you come up with your framework for your study. So this article, if you see how they have organized the literature review based on their study. So they say, okay, the topic is on tourism destination image. So what they have done is, okay, these are the, all the authors have talked about the different as concepts uh, topic that is covered as far as tourism destination. So who have said what? If you see here, there's a lot of articles here. And then all the definition. So what is the selected definitions of product, place, and destination image? What have everyone have said? There's a lot of landmark articles here as well. And then based on this analysis, they say, okay, uh, what are the attributes that, have, that all these authors have used for the studies? What kind of method they have used? And then they come up with the the qualitative and quantitative uh, approach of the study. So, so this allows you to understand a, sim a research that is done on destination image and what they have used. Okay, and then the procedures, how they have done the research. So it looks very complicated, but actually what it is doing is it is trying to conceptualize how the literature review was done for a particular research. So when you do your research, this is what you need to do. At the end of your literature review, you should be able to come up with all these things. If you have done all this, if you've done your literature review very well, you should be able to come up with a good framework of your literature review. And that framework that you design is actually your first publication if you are on a if you are planning to do your master's or, or PhD. So normally all my PhD students, I will always tell them that your first paper must be the review of your literature. So you already got your first article out. You don't have to wait for your PhD to complete or your master's to complete to get your first article. So this is one way. The literature review is your first article. And then of course, there are tools that can also help you. Okay, you can do, of course, the traditional way of, of doing the literature uh, where you don't use any apps. You can also use some apps. I'm sure some of you have heard of NVivo. NVivo is an application that is used for qualitative research. As I've said, uh, doing a literature review is similar to doing a qualitative research because you're dealing with a lot of text-based information, same as a qualitative research. So NVivo software is a tool uh, that can be used to do that. You can actually identify some of the themes that is coming up from your literature review and let NVivo analyze it accordingly. So once you have, you have tagged the themes for every article, that, the information that is important to you, and we will analyze it for you. So if you say, hey, I need an article from the year 2000 to 2000 to 2021, uh, which have the following themes, that which have the following theme and have used the following methodology. It'll analyze and immediately give you a summary. So that is an advantage of using a software. Of course, you can do the traditional way, but it's more work. But there are a lot of apps out there that can help you even to do a good uh, literature review. So that is giving you a quick snapshot of uh, how you can organize yourself when you write your literature review. So next, I'm going to hand over to Ms. Fairo Niza, who's also going to give you a very important part of literature review. So when you're dealing with literature review, the role of library becomes important. You need to know how to use the library efficiently to find the right article. So she's going to take you through uh, these steps. So over to you, Farunisa. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. B. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for today's session, I will share with you on how to find recent resources such as articles, books, conference publication using citation um, tracking or citation analysis and how to create alert to notify you on any new publication of your topic. Your literature review gives reader an understanding of the scholarly research of your topic. Therefore, it is important for you to locate and evaluate as much resources on your topic for your literature review. Next slide, please. Citation tracking or citation analysis. Look at the number of times that a particular work author or journal have been cited in the bibliographies of others' work. This gives an indication on how they have received by the academic community. Citation tracking can facilitate the review and evaluation of literature. There are a number of tools available. However, no single database cover all works that cite other works. So searching across several databases is necessary to ensure that you cover everything that is uh, related to your topic. There are two main ways to do uh, citation tracking. One way is to follow um, references backwards. And you can do this by looking at the references at the bottom of the article you have already cited. Uh, there is likely to be at least a couple of pro promising articles. Okay. The second way is to follow references forward. Some databases allow you to look at uh, particular articles and see what paper have cited that article. So you can look at the list and then, then you can uh, find a lot of relevant research on your topic. So the most important thing you have to keep in mind is when following references backwards, you will actually be finding articles that are older than the one that you are using. Okay, when following references forward, you will be finding articles that are more recent than the article you use. Why is it important to cite uh, to use citation tracking? The first one, citation tracking can be an effective way to use a landmark or if influential article to find more recent related articles that cite that article. It is also can be an effective way to identify who has subsequently cited the work of the leading scholar in a particular field. Okay. The next reason is you can find more scholarly resources in the field. The third reason why is by conducting your literature review, citation tracking can be a particularly useful means of for evaluating a study impact in a particular discipline based upon the number of time an author or article has been cited subsequently by others. So citation tracking can also be effective means to determine the interdisciplinary value of a particular study because you can identify how many times subsequent citation to an article appeared in discipline outside of where the cited articles was published. Next slide, please. Okay, resources and databases for citation tracking. Databases will, with well-developed citation trackings are Scopus, Web of Science, and Google Scholar. Other databases also have developed some capability, as example, EBSCO Academic Search Complete and Business Source Complete. Today, we will look at Google Scholar as tools for citation tracking. Okay, so this is an example from Google Scholar Search Engine. Google Scholar Search Engine covers journals, conferences, papers, thesis, and dissertation, academic books, abstract, technical report, and other scholarly literature from all broad areas of research from a variety of academic publisher, professional society, and university repositories. Under the search results, as you can see on the screen, you can click on Cited by to display a list of articles and documents that have cited the document originally retrieved in the search. You can also click on the hyperlink names of the author to find research by the specific author. Or you can search the author's name and see what else have been have written by the author. Next slide, please.
Okay, this is an example of uh, when we do search using the author's name. So what you can see is you a list of uh, resources written by the specific author. So there will be a cited section or column where it shows the articles that has been written by the author and also the cited by how many times it has been cited. Okay, the original article written by the writer. Next, please. Okay, content alerting or current awareness services. This is an automatic uh, notification sent by email or text message. Alerts refer to notification when something of interest to you has been published or added to the database or website. This can be a specific topic or specific journals, uh, definition, terminology, and the frequency of notification varies from publisher to publisher. So email notification require you to register. So you need to register uh, your email address and your preferences. Okay, there are two different types of alert services. The first one is safe search alert. This is email notification of recent articles matching previously submitted searches. Okay, the second type of uh, alert is a table of content alert. The update of the tables of content of the most current issues of the journals you specify when you sign up. So you can, you can put it in, in your selection. Okay, daily or weekly email alerts will notify the subscribers of article matching submitted topics. Alert frequency vary depending on the publisher's database updates. Okay, other ways that you can get current information is by using RSS feeds. It allows you to keep up to date on your favorite website or journal by subscribing to these feeds. These are free services available. Okay, next please. Content alerting services can be especially useful because for journals, they can alert you to new articles in journals of particular interest. So it will give you the most current information about the articles that has published under the journals. So the drawback of this is publisher alert is they usually covers a very small number of journals while database alert can cover uh, several thousand. So the coverage is, uh, is smaller for uh, publishers journals. So database alert can cover thousands of journals while publisher alert are usually limited to a significant fewer number of journals. The drawback is that databases are slower to update the publisher's website. Publisher website are the first place of information is made available. Okay, the drawback by uh, using databases alert is you have to actually subscribe to the database to access to the information. Okay, next page. All right, on the screen is an example of Google Scholar Alert. Send whenever new articles written by an author or a topic that you have identified in your preferences. Okay, it will appear in any content indexed by Google Scholar. So you have registered your email, so it will be sent to your email. Okay. The frequency you can also determine uh, how frequent you want it to be sent to your email to notify about any recent articles about whatever topic or any author that you have selected that has published any new articles. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, an example from WU District Digital Library Database. Uh, the one that I use is Expo eBooks Business with Academic. So from the search results at the top right under the heading share, you can create an alert either by email or by using the RSS feed. So there's a feature on uh, the search results that you can create the email alert on any on the topic that you have searched for. The okay, next slide please. Okay, once you have made your search, okay, you can click on the RSS symbols that allows you to set up and create the alert based on the search you have made. So sometimes when we do search, we have uh, a lot of uh, complicated search term that we use. So we want to make sure that uh, because we add in a lot of limiters, for example, you put the age range, the, um, the year range, the date range, geographical range, and so on. So 
you want to make sure that you save the search strategy that you have used. Okay. And then whenever the new content that meets the criteria that you have uh, set, it will appear in the database, it will send you an email alert to the new content. So it's actually save you a lot of uh, time because you don't have to uh, keep on looking for the same topic. So it will be sent automatically to your uh, the, to the email or through the RSS feed. Okay, next step, please. Evaluating the source. Okay, in your research, you eventually face the challenge of evaluating the sources you have located and selecting those you judge to be the most suitable or appropriate for your needs. So it is important to look at the authority, usefulness, and reliability of all the sources. Evaluating the authority, usefulness, and reliability of resources is a crucial step in conducting a review of the literature that effectively cover pertinent research and demonstrates to the user that you know what you are talking about. So the process of evaluating scholarly materials also enhance your general skill and ability so that you can seek alternative points of view and offering perspective. So you can identify the possible bias in the work of others, distinguish between the facts, fiction, and opinion. You can develop and strengthen your ability to distinguish between relevant and non-relevant content. So you can draw well thoughts out conclusion and synthesize information, accepting meaning from the deliberate process of interpretation and analysis. Okay. So you need to think critically about the validity, the validity and reliability of a research resource generally involve asking yourself a series of questions about the quality of both the authority and the content of the item. So basically when you inquire about the author, meaning that you are checking what are the author's credential, okay, which institution affiliates with the with your her with uh, their works, okay? Educational background, past writing or experience, okay? Is the book or article written on a topic in the author's area? Is the author areas of expertise? Okay, how has the instruct has either as your supervisor or instructor mentioned this author? So have you seen the author's name cited in other sources or bibliography? So these are the things that you need to acquire. So for the author for publication, so you need to refer to what uh, when was the source published? Okay, is the source current or out of date for your topic? So maybe it was current at the time it was published, but now it is no longer useful or current for your topic. Okay, so when was the information written? Is there a date when the site was last updated and so on? Okay. Inquiring about the edition or revision meanings that is you have to check whether this is the first edition of this publication or not. The further edition indicate a source has been revised and updated to reflect changes in the knowledge. So it will include omission and harmonize with the intended needs of the reader. So when you talk about inquiring about publisher, you're actually is looking at if the source is published by a university press. If it is likely to be scholarly, it is normally uh, published by a university press. Okay, Although the fact that the publisher is reputable does not necessarily guarantee the quality. So it does show that the publisher may have high regards for the source being published. So when you inquire about the title of journal, means you are looking at um, whether this is a scholarly or a popular journal. Okay, this distinction is important because it indicates different levels of complexity in conveying the ideas. Okay, The next one is for evaluating the content. Okay, so when you evaluate the content, you have to look at firstly the intended audience. Okay, what are the what type of audience is the author addressing? Is the publication aimed at a specific, uh, a specialized or a general audience? Is this source too elementary, too technical, or too advanced? So these are the things that you have to ask about. Okay, who is the intended audience? 
is it appropriate for you to use as an academic work? Okay. So the next one is to look at the objectivity. It is the information covered facts, opinions, or propaganda. It is not always easy to separate facts from opinion. Facts can, can usually be verified opinions, though they may um, be a bit uh, what do you call this? Uh, be based on factual information evolved from the interpre interpretation. So does the information appear to be valid and well researched? So these are the questions that you need to look at. So the coverage, uh, does the work update other sources or add new information? So does it intens intensively or marginally cover your topic? So you should explore enough sources to obtain a vari variety of viewpoints. And then you need to look at the writing style. So is the publication organized logically? Are the main point clearly presented? Do you find the text easy to read or is it silted or choppy? Is the author argument repetitive? Okay, repetitive means it keep on uh, repeating the, the same information as well. Okay, next is the evaluative review. Okay, in the case of books, uh, locate critical review of work in a database. So you have to see if the review is positive. Is the book under review considered a valuable contribution to the field? Uh, so what are the reviewers saying about the book that you are using? Are there any strong differences of opinion? Does the reviewer uh, mention other books that might be better than the book that you are looking at? Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, the next is uh, evaluating website. Okay, website are actually unfiltered information sources. So meaning that anyone can put anything on it by passing editorial or peer review. So it is most important to, that we evaluate any information on the web before we use and cite the information. Okay, web content requires additional methods of evaluation for more authoritative and reliable resources. To help determine if you are looking at a credible quality information found on the website, consider the three W's, that is the who, where, and when, okay, when you are evaluating a website. So if you can't find the answers to these questions, then it may be best to look for other sources. Next slide, please. You need to evaluate each information Locate on the website using the following criteria. The who is referring to authority. So you need to ask again, who is the author, source, or the publisher of this information? Are the author credentials given? Is the author qualified to write on the topic? Is their contact information, address, and email? Does the URL reveal anything about the source or the author? So basically, we can look at the domain abbreviation, um, the .com, .edu, .gov, .org, and so on. Okay? So this will give you some tools when you're doing evaluation. Where is actually referring to the accuracy? So you can ask where does the information come from? Is the information, support, uh, is the information supported by evidence? Has the information been reviewed? So you can verify, uh, if you can verify any of the other sources, then you can uh, use it. If you are unable to verify, then you know, best to look at other resources. And then the language also, does it seem biased? Okay, the next one is um, to look at the uh, any spelling or grammatical or typographical error, okay? So, these are the, some of the clues related to the currency. So when is referring to the currency. Currency is to ask question, when was the information published or posted? Has the information been revised or updated? Is the information current or up, out of date for your topic? And then you can also check on any of the links that they have provided in the uh, web page. So if none of the link works, meaning that uh, the website has not been updated. Okay. So finally, you have to decide if this is the right uh, source for you to use in your topic or research. 
So it's very important for you to properly evaluate any resources because at the end of the day, you want to search for quality information that you can use for your research. Next slide, please. Okay, literature review uh, sources. There are three types of sources, uh, primary sources, secondary sources, and tertiary sources. Reviewing all these sources provides different values in improving your overall research. Next slide, please. So let's look at uh, the primary sources. Okay. Reviewing primary sources material can be of value in improving your overall research. Paper because they are original materials, they're created from the time period involved and provide direct or first-hand evidence about an event, object, person, or work of art have not been filtered through interpretation or evaluation by others and represent original thinking or experiences, reporting of a discovery or the sharing of new information. The next one is a secondary source. Reviewing secondary source material can be of value in improving your overall research paper because secondary sources facilitate the communication of what is known about the topic. Secondary sources are interpretation based on primary sources. So secondary sources describe, discuss, interpret, comment upon, analyze, evaluate, summarize, and process primary sources. Secondary source materials can be articles in newspaper or popular magazine, book or movie reviews, or articles found in scholarly journals that discuss or evaluate someone else's original research. Majority of the sources in a literature review are secondary sources that present research findings, analysis, and the evaluation of other researchers' work. Okay, next slide, please. Tertiary and other types of sources. Reviewing tertiary source material can be of value in improving your overall research because they are often compiled factual information in one place. So it leads the reader to the additional sources. So you can get a large quality of uh, information related on data and so on. It often contain references and bibliographies that can point you to key primary and secondary sources. Tertiary sources refer to encyclopedias, dictionary, textbook, and other reference material that provide broad overview of particular topics. Tertiary sources summarize and interpret other resources. So they can be a great place to begin studying unfamiliar topic. The great literature refers to reports, conference proceeding, preprints, working paper, thesis, dissertation, personal communication, and technical notes. So often published by government, business, or academic organization. This kind of literature can be key for emerging research and alternative perspective. Government publication are a subset of gray, gray literature and can be important source for state, federal, and international perspective on official government proceedings of all times. The trade literature refer to journals, website, newsletter, and other sources aim at professionals in a particular field. These sources will often report news and trends in the field. Reviews of products related to the industry at hand, interviews with leaders in the field as well as job listing and advertisement. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, there are three types of publication that may appear in the search results. Okay. The display chart uh, on the screen can help you to distinguish between a scholarly journal article, popular trade and general interest publication. So as you can see, scholarly publication are peer reviewed, meaning the content has been reviewed by academic peers to ensure the reliability of method use and the validity of findings. So it is limited circulation attached to an academic organization. Popular uh, 
sources usually publications that are intended for general audience or readers. They are written typically to entertain, inform, or persuade. Yes, colorful uh, pictures, advertisement written for public. So there are usually uh, no, no references and the circulation is very high. So trade publication refers to intended to share general news, trends, and opinions about practitioners in a certain industry or profession. Although generally written by experts, they are not considered scholarly because they are not peer reviewed and do not focus on advancing new knowledge discovery or reporting research results. So the next slide is also um, looking at comparison between the uh, scholarly and also popular journals. Okay. Next slide, please. All right, so this is a list of online resources uh, for lesson five. So as usual, the link uh, will get you to the full information about that resources uh, related to literature review. So thank you very much. And I pass it back to Rafi. Thank you, Bairo Nizan, for an in-depth uh, presentation. As I've said, uh, there's a lot we have covered today. No worries, if you're registered, you will get access to all this information. Uh, so we spend a bit more time today because uh, this is an important process when you carry out your research. Okay, so once your literature review is weak, then it pulls down the whole research. So, so that's why we have given you a lot of information today. So now I would like to open the floor for any questions. Um, is there anyone have any questions uh, to three of us? Uh, if there's any issues that you have or any challenges that you have in your own research in, in carrying out your literature review, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can even put it in the chat if you don't want to ask directly. No questions? Quite much. Anyone is currently doing their graduate studies? Okay, for those of you who are doing your graduate studies, can you put a thumbs up? It's, I'm curious to see how many of you are actually doing your studies now. You see under the reaction button, just put a thumbs up. Let me see a count. How many of you are doing your graduate studies now? Anybody? Whether it's master's or PhD or, or DBA or, or any doctoral. Anybody in this group? One, one only? Oh, I thought there's more than one. Okay. So, so hopefully more of you will, okay, there's another one. So I, I hope more will, will uh, think of upgrading your, your qualification. Okay, so we, are, we will come up soon with more information to see how you are able to upgrade your qualification. Uh, so I think it's important for you to, 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 to not be so comfortable in where you are currently uh, in terms of upgrading your qualification. So I really do hope uh, all the sessions that we are doing with you, it may seem very fundamental, uh, very basic, but these are key information that you need to always uh, be, uh, be aware of when you do any work, uh, any research. So not just for the purpose of uh, doing your, your thesis or your upgrading your qualification, but just even to write a paper, okay? As a, as a lecturer, as a researcher, as a scholar, you need to continuously publish, okay? At least you set a target, at least I need to get at least one article out a year. Okay, I, I understand there's a lot of challenges, but you need to. So only when you do your research, you can bring the research into your classroom. So you become more relevant in your delivery. All right, no question. Okay, the time is 3.40. We are 10 minutes past our, our time. So once again, thank you to Prof. Brian and Fairuniza for, for, for the session today. As, as usual, uh, we have uh, discussed a lot of important things today and I really hope everyone have benefited from the session. 
the session has been recorded so you will get as usual at the end of the session uh, by tomorrow or the after you will get the link uh, of the presentation including the recording if you want to go through the recording so uh, so please feel free to go through the session so until i see you for our next session which is going to be focused on methodology i will sign off and uh, Hope to hear from you if there is any issues you can email anyone of us so take care have a good uh, weekend bye 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 everyone